grade levels letter um, to find out some more information, but we're about to recap a lot of that information now. So again, if you go to jamesdonerowschool.org and then go to news, and then you'll see some like returning K, uh, K-8 letters. And that includes such overview as at Monroe Elementary, the K kindergarten students will be coming for four days a week. And the rest of our students will be coming for two days a week for first to eighth grade. And those two days will be Mondays and Tuesdays. So students will report Mondays and Tuesdays. We'll all be home on Wednesdays um, to do, teachers are probably, the current reopening plan of the district has some additional training time for teachers on Wednesday afternoons. So you might experience a little bit of a shorter school day on a Wednesday. Um, and then additionally on Thursdays and Fridays, it will all be remote learning all day. All right. So it'll be the typical schedule that you, you've been accustomed to. Um, as we go through this slide today, our main goal today is to talk to you about our safety protocols. And um, we really want to make sure that you know the safety protocols in place so that you're making the decision that's right for you and your family. Um, we know that COVID is a very real thing. And I want to just reiterate that none of this here is like doing this thinking that like COVID is not real or that these aren't really scary times. You know, this is, uh, you're not going to see us, you know, talking about like, oh, COVID isn't real. It's not, it doesn't matter. COVID is very real. It very much matters. And it has a lot of impact on our social, emotional health, our mental health, as well as our physical health. And so that's why we are meeting today to talk about some of the protocols that we have in place. All right. So um, this decision made by CPS, a lot of this PowerPoint is pulled from the fall. Um, from one of the first, one of the two times that CPS delayed the reopening plan. And so um, this reopening plan was based on, based on the decision for equity at the core and really thinking about our students and whether a hybrid, excuse me, whether remote learning is really working for them. And um, you can see some of the more information on why this decision was made. But um, it, when you go into the next slide, you'll see that our goal today is to talk about the safety protocols just so that you're informed so that you know what's going on. All right. So uh, we will hope to have some time at the end for questions. Um, an overview of today's slides, which is about the equity at the core. We spoke on the protocols and all the buildings and the things that we've done operationally and physically within our facilities to keep your children safe and some of the way that the new school day will flow for them. So into our next slide, um, this one's a doozy. This one's a long slide. <laughs> so stick with me. We'll try to make it interesting as possible, okay? So cloth face mask covering. All kids are gonna be wearing a cloth face mask covering. Here's one of the Monroe ones. We have a couple designs. This one says, hashtag mask up Monroe. Um, this is a, one of the U sizes. It doesn't fit my big face very well, but all kids are gonna be wearing um, a, a mask. And currently at Monroe, we have no students who have a requested an accommodation due to a medical need for a mask. And so everybody will be wearing masks. Um, and that's something we're really gonna be working on. And we've been building lesson plans out and some of the, the letters have more information about how your kid will be experiencing some of those lesson plans and activities um, about wearing a mask. It does sound kind of silly, but you know, we also teach kids to walk in lines. And I say that makes much less sense <laughs> than wearing a mask. Masks are really important. So please start practicing with your kids on how to wear a mask every day for a full day, because it is a lot more work to wear a mask for a full day than it is to wear a mask to the grocery store or something like that. So um, we recommend starting with an hour, then two hours and three days, four hours, five, all the way up until the end of the week, they had a five hours because they've increased each day by an hour. Um, class, these are gonna be CFC, uh, the CFC is the cloth face mask covering, it needs to be a two ply per CDC. Enhanced PPE for the age and development of a child. So certain rooms do have enhanced PPE for the students um, like, or definitely for the adults. And so for instance, like in our pre-K programs where there's diapering, there's gowns and um, masks and face shields and other pieces. Um, for other speech pathologists, we have a like clear masks. And so depending on your role for the nurse as well, the care room. So different roles at Monroe and different students will have different levels of PPE. The room disinfection, we're having regular cleaning. Um, we do have additional two staff members who have been um, hired on at Monroe and they've been great. They've been here for several months now. And we also have teams that come in um, when needed to work additional shifts at night. Our pods are maintaining a 30 foot distance with all other pods at lunch, play, bathrooms, et cetera. And so that's a big deal. So kind of once you start to think through that, we'll talk through that more at the day in the life, but kids are keeping a 30 foot distance between other classes at all times. So like for instance, we do hope that we can get some of the kids out to the turf field um, for like gross motor, uh, gross motor time, PE class, things like this, but what, if there, if there are two classes out there, we'll have a 30 foot distance between them, okay? 
Um, social distancing, kids are going to have a six foot distance and should have a six foot distance. Everybody should have a six foot distance between them at all times. And that's kind of something where kids hopefully are starting to practice. And it kind of, you know, fortunately for those who are back at work, it starts to feel natural, which is really weird, but it starts to feel natural after a while um, to just kind of always back up for one another. Um, we're not going to be having, we're going to really be limiting the sharing of use of materials across students. Um, I'm in a classroom right now and you'll see that if I kind of scoot down, you kind of see the desks all face six feet apart, um, all facing the same direction. And often a lot of the teachers are putting in a, a second desk next to the kids so that they can keep their materials right there with them instead of like getting up as much as they used to. Um, we do have care rooms. Two of them are currently operational. Um, there's a lot of talk about care rooms. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a care room now so um, that you can uh, make the decision, the informed decision. Um, so a care room has, there's, we have two of them. Um, we also have a third backup. It's a, by a care CRA, care room attendant, who has extensive hours of training and modules. And I'm not going to be able to get into all of it right now. And it would be super boring if I did. But some overview is basically if a kid does have any symptoms, please, please, please keep them home. Okay. Don't send your kid. You, you typically were like, oh, yeah, you know, attendance or grit or whatever. No, keep them home. <laughs> so um, if your kid has any symptoms at all, please keep your kid at home. With that said, if your kid does uh, throughout the day develop symptoms or the temperature checks, which we're going to be doing regularly, do develop and the temperature goes above 100.4, there's going to be a sent to the care room. Somebody picks the child up from the classroom because we don't want to be breaking that pod of them being in the room all day. So somebody comes to the classroom, carries them down, not carries, walks them down <laughs> via social distancing to the care room. They're scanned into the care room via a QR code. There's additional protocols that happen, a lot of tracking of the symptoms and what's happening there. And it could result in a 10-day quarantine. It could result in a um, mandatory letter, doctor note. Um, it could resent court resort in a mandatory COVID test. It depends on the symptoms that are persisting and then the tracking of the system that's going into our information system in Aspen. Okay. Um, the care room, if you ever do get a call that your kids have been sent to the care room, we need to ensure that the parent um, or legal guardian picks up the kid within two hours. Sanitation of supplies and materials before sharing. Um, that's going to be really important. We're limiting the amount of supplies. All the kids that are coming in are going to get a backpack of supplies on the first day so that they have the nuts and bolts with them. So that to keep it nice and easy, everybody has a level set so we don't have to be sharing the pencil sharpener or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, symptomatic students. I talked a little bit about that already, about if they are showing those symptoms. And there's a routine surveillance testing of all staff. So I want to talk about that for a minute because that's kind of a big deal. Um, so on Mondays, at Monroe Elementary's day is Mondays, all the staff will receive um, access to this routine surveillance testing. And so we had like on Monday, for instance, we had a team of nurses come out to the auditorium and staff members were called down and given these um, options for this surveillance testing or for a COVID test right there on site. And then depending what happens there can result in a shutting down of the pod um, and other protocols. To, well, yeah, there's a positive COVID test, uh, there'd be a shutting down of the pod. Um, and there's additional protocols related to how we would handle that situation right there in that moment. Because the person might be asymptomatic and not know. Though we would be checking temperatures all day um, throughout the day. Um, there will be a temperature check that happens outside. Um, but with that said, that temperature check is not as important because that temperature check, we don't wanna A, have lines up outside that's really important. We don't want to have this like congestion of all these kids like waiting to get inside. And that's one of the reasons that we have staggered start times. Um, but we also want to ensure that the student has been in the building for at least five minutes because we don't want to have an inflated, or excuse me, we don't have the temperature too cold because they're just cold. And then they actually are sick, but then the temperature reads that they're not sick because they're cold. And so um, the temperature checks are going to be available throughout the day um, in each of the classrooms. Um, I got off topic there for routine. Uh, somebody might not know that they're test they they have a positive. And so that's why we have that routine surveillance testing. Um, you know, I know that yes, last week, or excuse me, earlier this week, it was scary news that last week we did have somebody in the building, somebody in the building that does not mean a staff member, a student. Um, it was before students were present in the building, um, a staff member, a student, it can be a delivery person. It could be somebody dropping something off, running through, running on our facilities. We have a lot of um, capital improvement right now, including a new art room floor, building out some new offices, fixing um, some water issues. It could have been a worker. So somebody in the building um, did have a positive case. 
one of the things that, and that was last week, one of the things we know though, luckily so far we haven't had anybody have a, we haven't had any instances of a second positive case. And that's, that's really good news to us. And we hope to keep that um, up to our 14 day mark, because that means that, yes, yeah, somebody did enter the building with COVID, but we don't have it yet. We don't have any example of COVID spreading, you know, within the building. With that said, COVID is spreading in our whole entire community right now. Let's be real. We're in a community spread phase. And so, you know, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, well, I've said what I'm going to say there. <laughs> I'm going to get boring to you guys. Uh, the contract tasting team also will be reaching out in those cases. And there's websites that we'll be reaching. Um, the contract tracing is done with the city of Chicago as well as Chicago Public Schools. And it gives exact letters. So, for instance, you might have, I think you guys all received letter four from me, which says it was a positive case. But there's a whole bunch of slew of other letter, letters depending on what level of um, contact you had with a person with COVID. Okay. And when there's a COVID case in the building, excuse me, within the pod, for instance, that pod would obviously shut down. If you go to the next slide, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the overall safety in this facility upgrades. Um, it talks about some of those the different ventilation checks and some of the different ventilation work that the Chicago Public Schools did on our systems. Um, and some of them, some of them were as simple as making sure that all of the classrooms that the kids are in are, and the adults are going to have a functioning window. The windows are going to be open. Um, and so I do encourage your child to bring like some like a layer, you know, like a a lightweight jacket or something that he or she can take off during the day or put back on. It's not necessarily going to be cold, but like sitting in a room right now, there's a bit of a draft. It feels a little drafty because this window is open and there's a ventilation going on over here. So I'm kind of caught like in a little bit of a draft. So something to keep in mind. Each classroom does have a HEPA grade filter. I know people want to see that. So I'll see if I can. There it is. There's those magic filters everybody's talking about. Um, those filters are more efficient, they're like super high efficiency HEPA filters. I'll be running in the classrooms at all time and wherever um, students are or adults if it's a multi-purpose room. Um, there's some of the other ventilation information here about increasing the airflow um, and some of the different societies and um, certification checks that they had come out. Some of the other things that we've done on a capital pace piece is that we've um, changed, the drinking fonts have been shut down, but we've added water bottle, water bottle filling stations and things like that. So we do have some long lasting capital upgrades to the building, which are nice. Um, day in the life of a typical student coming in. So first thing at home, you're gonna get a text from Chicago Public Schools if you've opted into texting, and it's gonna take you to cps.edu slash health screener. And if you don't get that text, that's fine. You can call our office and get, get your information updated so that you do. But if you don't, you're going to go to the website, cps.edu slash health screener and take some questions. If you want, I recommend doing it tonight just so you can see what the questions are. And then before you hit submit, just don't hit submit. <laughs> well, you guess you can and it'll tell you you can enter the building, but we're going to be closed. So um, go at cps.edu slash health screener. Um, you will take your questions about like making sure that you've been following the Chicago travel ordinance, that you don't have any symptoms, including sneezing, cough, uh, flu. Like I said, you want to stay home if you do have any symptoms. Um, there's other questions on there. And then at the end of the health screener, it will tell you exactly what to do. Do come in, don't come in, or, you know, whatever, what other precaution you need to take at that time. Traveling on the school bus, um, I don't believe it applies to anybody on this call, but of course, once you leave your house, you should be wearing a face mask. This is the city of Chicago. And um, arrival at school, we are going to have staggered start times and we're going to be using all of our entrances and we're going to be spacing kids out out there. So just be used to that. You might be coming in a different door than you typically did and you'll we'll have a staggered start time that will start. Our start times will go start at 8 a.m. and then they'll end at 8.30 a.m. So children will be arriving at different times assigned to them during that. You'll get all that information on the 29th of January. Um, <coughs> entry and exit, you'll make sure that you're six feet apart from each other at all times. Um, the screener, which I talked about, there's also QR codes posted around the building in case you forget. You can take a picture on your phone and it will take you right to that website. Um, the offices, the buildings are fully functional. We're open and we're open now. So um, you can, our offices are open. We do ask, you know, we want to protect Matilda and Jane. So, and Luz and Miguel and the crew. So um, if possible, please shoot them an email or a phone number, but um, they're here and they're, they're really ready. It's hard, it's hard for me to say R's and W's. Ready and willing to help you on this. Um, the playground gate is, the playground is going to remain closed. And one of the other little 
things that I know is going to be a pain in the butt, but I really appreciate part of my language, but I really need your help on it, is that we're going to keep the playground gate closed um, that goes from four, between 403 and 404 on the turf side by the pre-K. The reason for that is that's a small little passage, and that's going to be too many families walking through there across pods. It's just not safe enough. And so we are asking that you walk around the building, and, and we know that's difficult, but thank you very much for that. We don't want to have that tight little space of people. Um, it's not possible to maintain six feet within that space. Um, the front play lot will remain closed, um, but we do plan on having um, some play areas throughout. And on the next slide, you'll see a little bit about that. Um, they'll go away to their classroom. They'll take their lunch, excuse me, they'll take their breakfast to their classroom with them. They'll follow the classroom procedures um, regarding the masks and the social distancing. Um, at Monroe, we have a we have assigned bathrooms for each homeroom as additionally we have bathroom um, schedules so that we can really track what's going on there and we don't cross pods and additionally with that we will have um, routine cleaning of the bathroom every hour okay and then if you go into the next special classes will no longer rotate so some of you when you were kids you might remember a thing called art on a cart that's what we're going back to <laughs> so um, the teacher will come to to your classroom to the child's classroom um, including for the departmentalized classes, the teacher will rotate between pods. There's limits of how many pods they see in a week, just like there's limits of how many kids a pod, pods a kid sees in a day and how many kids, a, all that. There's limits on pods, <laughs> but the, the teacher will come to the classroom so that we don't have those common spaces used and we really minimize that. Additional kids, you know, they're kids. Right. And we know this is some serious stuff and I can speak as I had too. It's some serious stuff that's happening. COVID is very serious and um, being at home is very serious and we know when we know that. And so um, we do want to have some opportunities for play. And so we've bought some independent play packs um, so that the kids can get out on the turf so that the kids can get out in social distance areas and playrooms um, in a way that's followed by schedules and protocols so that they can just kind of like get out, get out and about a bit. Um, and so that's all happening. And I'm scanning this. Uh, we've built out three additional cafeterias uh, throughout the building to make sure that the pot, we're obviously not putting six kids in a six pods in a cafeteria anymore. So we need to make sure that there's 30 feet between pods. So we've built out additional large um, open spaces for that. Um, then on the next slide, thanks for sticking with me guys. I know this is long. If you have questions, you can type them in the chat. Um, receiving student services. Um, we do wanna make sure that your kids are receiving student services. So. Um, we do have like evaluation areas and things like that. So for instance, like in a clinic for a psychologist's office, you're going to see another area that they have all seven evaluation area, two chairs, two a desk, 90 degree angles for these um, two sneeze guards. There's all these precautions in place. So it does enable us to make sure that your child is getting services. Um, and when possible, they'll be using remote um, for some of those services because we don't want to be having somebody like we don't want to, so like, um, let's say a speech pathologist or a nurse or somebody like that, let's say speech pathologist going to um, every pod, right? Or me, the principal seeing every pod in a day. So we have to be really careful of that um, to make sure that we're not carrying our, our germs because we all have germs, um, COVID or not, across the building. Um, accessing content, the kids will remain in their pod, but um, the additional teachers will rotate through. And for exiting the building, they'll move through with that six feet. So our staircases have been color coded and have up and down arrows um, to make sure that we keep it a really safe space for them. Um, I talked a little bit about that care room already and how we'll address symptoms as they move throughout the day. Um, you know, we talk about access and content. I probably should mention a little bit there about simultaneous instruction. Um, simultaneous instruction is a model that uh, out of the different hybrid models, um, almost always you see that simultaneous instruction is included as, as the model there for that. Um, it includes that the kids at home and the kids in the classroom are accessing the content and the, the, the classroom at the same time, virtually live through the room. So there's tech packs that are being employed out through the district to help and support through this. Um, with wide angle lenses, et cetera. Um, but the, the remote learning day will be a little bit shorter um, than it used to be for the live time with a teacher by about, about a half hour um, in most grades. And so we really want to value remote learning and we don't want to lose the quality there. That's very important to us because that's where the majority of our kids are. Um, and so we're going to be building out, we've been building out some new tech tools and things working with our teachers and thinking about the trainings and things for simultaneous teaching 
um, to ensure that we keep a high quality remote learning. And one of the things that we heard in an LLC meeting was um, previously that we didn't weren't able to do, but now could, um, is we're looking for a way to build a, a common lunch period for all of the K-8 students so that all, all, all excuse me, I shouldn't call it a lunch period, um, a screen time break where everybody will be working K-8 on the, at the same time, except off screen. Um, so that will enable families at home to have that common space with one another. Um, our pods at Monroe, we're predicting to be about five to 12 students that at this time, um, we will not be breaking, although it's 15 as a recommended max, we will not, we will not be going to 15. Um, and that's assuming everybody has a hundred percent attendance. And when New York public schools went back to school, about 40% of the kids who said they were going to return actually did return. So we're anticipating that there's going to be less kids return than thought they were going to return. If you do, if you do have a hybrid spot and you're on this call right now, um, you do have the option to um, not come to school. Um, particularly, you won't come to school if you're feeling sick. <laughs> and additionally, um, you can opt into remote learning at any time for the day or for longer. Um, you wanna make sure that there's a 14 day quarantine for te positive tests. There's a 10 day travel quarantine and all that's handled on the screener. Um, we wanna make sure that everybody's you know, if you're staying at home, we, we want you to, if you have sniffles and you're staying at home, then please join in the learning preference, excuse me, please join into our remote learning that day so that you keep that learning going. Um, and yeah, that's that. The social emotional learning, we're gonna be hitting that hard. I mean, this is some serious stuff. There, This is, if you are feeling, you know, anxious, depressed, or your child, you're not alone in that, okay? That's really important. Um, and it's okay not to be okay. And we want to meet you where you are and we want to work through that. And so, of course, we're going to be doing our calm classrooms and our morning meetings and our um, second step curriculum and all of these things that we have in place for social emotional supports, but we're going to be building those out more. Some of the information is here. And additionally, we have a new contact, Veronica Leque, um, and we're going to be working with her to build out some really strong social emotional learning and supports um, for our children and for our parents. And working with you to really connect in that way. Um, I think that's the last slide. I saw there was a question in the, sorry, my phone's going off here. I'm like one of the kids. I'm gonna pop over to the chat. Children be in person sitting on the computer all day. No, they will not be sitting on the computer all day. They will have a full day of instruction. Um, depending on the grade level depends. Uh, one sec, Kelly, I got you. Uh, uh, the, depending on the grade level depends how many hours they have. It's typically, for simultaneous, well, I don't get in all that, but <laughs> the, you can look on the CPS reopening plan. Um, but no, they won't be on the computer all day. They'll be, they'll be not on the computer actually. And CPS bandwidth can't handle every kid and every teacher in the building being on the computer all day, um, like in the remote learning setting that we're accustomed to. There will be times that the live session turns on. It's like okay, let's all. So what used to be on the Elmo or the projector or the LCD projector. Um, at that, that's like a great time to turn on the computer. And so everybody's at home joining in and they're accessing that mini lesson, which used to be back in the day, maybe we were all sitting on the rug and we were watching the slide go, the slides go through, you know, as the teacher was clicking through and having a large group discussion. Now that instead is going to be remote and that will be synchronous time, we call it, excuse me, simultaneous time, live time. And so the kids and in person and at home will be accessing it through that but they will all, they'll be together in the room. Just some of them will be on computer. Um, other times like a morning meeting, um, for instance, or like in a little class where they're coming around and they're doing like clapping games and like a circle like that. Um, not singing because you know, can't sing too loud because it puts too much stuff into the air. There's a lot of little rules you learn. Um, <laughs> but when they're doing quiet singing and clapping and things like that, um, that would be another time where we'd be using that simultaneous live teaching model. And for the hours of the day, it's the full hours of the day. You're either coming in at eight, somewhere between eight to 8.30 and then school will dismiss at 3.15. And, and I wanted to add to that question about um, how many hours per day a student in, in person would be on tech. Um, so there's gonna be different um, instances like Mr. Colin has said, where we want the kids at home and the kids at school to engage with each other and interact with each other. And those are the times where the kids would have to go on either on, on a Chromebook or a teacher would display on their um, 
smart board so that they can have interactions with each other and build that community uh, so they don't feel like they're two separate parts of a, of a community. They're one whole. Kelly, what are you thinking about? Uh, okay, sorry, I have a few questions. So if you've already covered some of these. One, people that have, like I have two different kids in school, are they going to start at the same time? Hmm. Great question. So there might be a staggered start time by 15 minutes, but um, in your particular in your particular kids' grades, second and third. Yeah, I don't. That was, I'm kind of like thinking through my head. They should be in the same start because it's not going to be by grade. It'll be by grade band. Okay, cool. Um, and then so should be fine. you said that something about that you'd be handing out book bags. So should we send our children mm -hmm. with nothing to school the first day? Your teacher will be communicating like a letter on the 29th. Um, okay. And I, I'm not anticipating teachers, like I think everybody knows what a hard time this is. And so I think supply lists will be very limited this year and this is a whole new life. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I think you can, I don't, I don't think that your teacher will be requiring anything that's particular for their classroom. They might be, um, you know, things that used to be on the supply list. They might have a few items that they still, that your child's still gonna need, but the majority of your items you can assume are gonna be covered by that book bag. It's gonna be, it's like the basic stuff, notebook, pencil, paper, folder. And, and then right now, both second and third grade, their lunchtime isn't until 12.55. My kids cannot hold out till 12.55. They're eating well before that. But since the kids at home, their lunch break will still be 12.55, right? Is that what time they're going to have lunch in class as well then? Yes. So that's the master schedule. So there won't be really shifts to the master time schedule-wise. So Trini's going to double check that information for you. Um, the like, They're going to have to have a snack between like... Yeah. And, they, and they and they do so any any of the kiddos that have a later lunch there's some time uh before their lunch to have a snack okay. um and and for second grade their lunch is 12 55 uh to 1 40 um that's their lunch and recess time but there is time throughout the day where there will be a time for snack okay and they also have lunch they also have breakfast coming in too and that typically eats in like Realistically, that's usually like a half hour most times. Yeah. I'm like, it's not, but it is. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Any other questions I can help with? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so how does it work for like, so my son has a paraprofessional. Mm -hmm. So how will that work as far as like the six feet and everything? Yeah. So safety, the child safety is always what's most important. And so and the imminent, and the imminent, you know, um, things that are happening at that particular moment. And so we do really want to maintain that six foot distance for everybody's safety at all times. And really want to, particularly in those situations, it's really going to be important to practice with your child about wearing a mask so that we're really all used to that um, because we are going to be sharing in such short quarters. Um, and so we do, I mean, if something's happening and the kid has special needs, we need to accommodate those special needs like always. And so that, that won't be any different. There's going to be times that the six foot rule due to a particular kid's accommodations or the imminent threats and the imminent dangers or things like that. Those don't go away. COVID is not the only thing that is existing right now. That's a scary thing. There's a lot of scary things out there and a lot of things that we're all working through internally. And so we do recognize that, but yeah, your kid should maintain six foot distance from all times. And I really hope to, that you can help all of us. Me too, because I mean, these masks, I don't know if you saw, I was like double masked up. So we all need to be really practicing like wearing a mask for a long time because it's different. Wearing a mask for an hour or like taking a little walk or whatever is different than wearing a mask for a full day. And so Hopefully we're all practicing that with our kids because you think it's not a big deal, but like doing it, it's a big deal. It's annoying, <laughs> but it's important and we need to do it. And, you know, so, since we're on the topic of masks, I wanted to also um, say that for our preschoolers that they obviously are they're the first wave. And something that we've noticed with the preschoolers is that they're not used to putting on their mask and taking off their mask mm -hmm. on their own parents are the ones helping them so when their mask comes off they're they want somebody to help them right they want somebody like hey help me put it up so it's it's for their little hands it's really hard for them to do this right so ha so if you have little little ones practice practice with them putting the mask on if it falls off if it goes under the nose put it back on if this comes helping them put it on um because that's something that we found with our, our preschoolers 
We're going to do this again in Spanish. We have two, just like two minutes left, but to help with that, you can think of the hashtag, hashtag mask Monroe, because we want the, no, the mask over the mouth, over the nose too. And so kind of be messaging that, you know, they all slide down, but we want to be encouraging that with our kids. Um, well, my, my main question is, so his paraprofessional will not be able to come within six feet of contact with him? Yeah, we're hoping to keep us all at a behavior state that's like level, right? That's our goal is always I'm in rural elementary in every school to keep children at a and all of us at a behavior state that's level. And that's really difficult right now, right? But ideally, all of us are on task doing our work and are leveled and are set. And um, we have enough social emotional work to really keep us leveled um, in this high anxiety and stressful time. And so we'll be doubling down on those efforts to keep it that way. But we do recognize that, that sometimes like there's we need to be careful of, with any kid. If there's an immediate, th it's not like if, you know, something's falling off the ceiling and it's about to fall on a kid, you know, we should jump in and help, right? Like there's, there's, there's threats. And so um, that's, that's a very real thing. Okay. Um, our goal is to make it so that everybody's on task and able to function with, with within, with not having that six foot roll broken, but um, we do know the special needs of special children. Um, I have time for one last question before we head over to Espanol. Don't be shy. I have a question. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so I kind of missed that little bit of detail. So the kids, um, their dismissal time, is it going to be different or? Yeah. So depending, they, they could be at like from like three to three fifteen. So there'll be like, it'll be a staggered, so staggered dismissal time as well, but we have additional doors for, Dismissal, you don't have to worry about entry and exit. You don't have to worry about waiting out there. Keep in mind, please, like, we don't know we used to be able to accommodate more like an early drop off, and we're not going to be able to accommodate that anymore. You know, we used to, kids used to get dropped off a lot earlier than 8.15, so right. like 35. No. So, <laughs> so please yeah. drop off, like, when it's time. But for dismissal, we don't have to worry about that. So the dismissal window is going to be a little shorter because of that. Okay, and then if we need to pick them up um, before dismissal time or mm -hmm. something tweaked, I'll just email you because I was yeah, just coming you can, last time. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be it'll typical. It'll be the same thing with like an early dismissal. Like it'll get picked up for an early dismissal. Okay, but like if it's like every day, would it affect our attendance or? Yeah, we can like kind of think through if there's something like that, we can kind of think through that. There's not going to be in person after school programming in Chicago. Right. Mm -hmm. at my time, um, just keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, I would just, I was just concerned about the this muscle time, but I sent you an email so we can talk about that through there. Perfect. Rock and roll. Um, if you guys have any other things, please call us or email me at B as in boy Quinlan Q U I N L A N at CPS at edu so that we can help you guys. And um, we know this is really, oh, she put it in the chat, thanks. Um, we know this is really scary stuff. We're with you guys. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of things that are scary right now, not just COVID, but the mental health crisis in our country. And so we're recognizing that too. And so it's even more important for us to stick with you and um, hear you out and hear our teachers and everybody out so that we can really make um, a right decision and do things right by our kids, all right? Thanks for joining us today. And this is gonna be on tinyurl.com slash Monroe Thank YouTube. you. Sign it this time. Sylvia, maybe you can help me sign it really quick. Why? How do you do why? Why? You did a good job on the video. And those yeah, slides. thanks. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> those two right. why and why. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you later. All right, no problem. Bye. Bye.